Hi there, May Plum here, and today I'm going to show you three ways to put some little sparkling touches with my 28 Lilac Lane embellishment mixes onto your holiday crafting. So what I have here, this is the Yuletide Greetings, this is the new bottle mix, and this is the Winter Wonderland, also a new bottle mix. And they're fabulous together, or apart, or mixed. Obviously the whites mixed with almost any other mix is fantastic. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you three different things. A tag, a card, and a gift box. I love making little gift boxes, especially around Christmas time. Because then I can take things such as gift cards or just cash gifts for the teenagers in my life and really give them something special. So what I have here, this little box, I've painted the top gold and the bottom I've just wrapped in some Lawn Fawn pattern paper. This is done. I just wrap it with the paper. I like to leave a little bit at the top because if I go all the way to the top, a lot of times when this goes to go on, it creates a problem. I just use tape runner to adhere that. You can get these little boxes all over the place, or I like to upcycle things as well. Now I'm going to use a mix. So what I'm going to do is here on my surface, I'm just going to put some of the Yuletide greetings. Aren't those pretty? All those greens and reds. And then I'm also going to shake out some of the Winter Wonderland and get started. I really like utilizing PPA adhesive for all of my dimensional projects or any project where I've got dimensional accents going on. It's a really great adhesive and it's wonderful because even if it gets stuck, um, the top pops right off and it's always easy to clean. So you gotta love that. Now I'm just going to put some adhesive on the top. I'm gonna do the top and the sides. And then for this, because I just want to do buttons. If you want to add a charm or something like that, maybe a sentiment, you would want to go ahead and add that. If you want to just do buttons, you'll want to just start at one side and you'll also want to use, if you have bigger buttons, you'll want to put those in first, but you're just going to start filling in the space. And I like to fill in the space one side to the other, but there's no wrong way. One of the wonderful things about this project is that you really can't go wrong. You're just going to play with it and enjoy. And the buttons as well as the half pearls that are in these bottles are all really great to get your first layer going and just work all the way across. Once you are happy, and look at that first of all, let's just look at that. So I've been adding, been taking little sequins and just kind of plopping them in here and there and the same with little beads and things, just kind of plopping them wherever I've got a little spot that I want filled. Super easy. You really can't mess it up. Now, once you have everything as you like it, it's up to you. You'll notice, why did I paint it gold when the inside and the edge is craft? I like the inside plane. I don't like paint on the inside of these because I find that, you know, depending on weather and humidity and all that, sometimes it stays a little bit tacky and I don't want that. So I like to leave the inside plane. Maybe if I wanted, I could take a little tiny stamp and stamp something in here or such. The sides, you can repeat, you can decorate all along the sides. You could even, I've sometimes decorated the inside of the lid or done wild things like that. It's really up to you. There's a lot of flexibility to really customize this to your own tastes or to the recipient. The one thing I do like to do, I like to get some stickles. The color will depend on you. And I like to just go in and if there's any, as the glue dries, it turns completely clear. So. As I get little clear spots, if I find areas where I think, boy, I'd like a little bit of sparkle, I just add a little bit of stickles and then that just adds a little bit of glitter glue. Now, because I painted it gold, I don't actually have to stress this part because I don't have to worry about any clashing colors or anything such as a design. If this was an upcycled project where there was a design or a logo or something I was concerned about, then I would want to be making sure to cover that up. I don't have to worry about any of that, but this just makes for a little more fun. And at the holidays, you cannot get enough sparkle and glitter as far as I'm concerned. It's so the one time a year I like to just kind of explode my use of the sparkly stuff. Now, once you're satisfied and you've gone around and you're happy with everything you've got, you're done. So let's move on to the gift tag. 
I have an Avery L set here with lots of cute, sweet little sentiments, perfect for the holidays. And what I'm going to do, I've got my manila tag and I have some watermark resist ink. And I'm just going to stamp this all over. We're not going to worry about if it's going to show up. I'm not going to worry about where the edges are. I'm not even going to worry about if I get a great stamp on every single one of my images because this is going to become the background. And the reason I'm doing this type of ink is because I just want it to be really subtle. I don't want it to be really bold. I want it to just have just barely. It's just barely there. You'll be able to see it when I have it in here. You'll be able to see where the words are. And don't worry, guys, if it doesn't line up just right, if something's not a little bit off or like you have a little bit of an awkward spot, do not worry. Just keep stamping until you do have most of it nice and filled up. And as that dries, it's just going to be exactly what it says, watermark. So it's going to be very, very subtle. And it's going to create for us a background that is just ever so slightly there and then we can have all the fun we want with buttons but also I'm going to go ahead and stamp and cut out just a couple of images just to give us I think I'll do this one this one and this one just three and I'm just gonna do a couple there to give us a little cluster of things here and then I'll also do I think homemade and or Christmas calories, I'll do Christmas calories don't count. So I'll do Christmas calories don't count on a little piece of paper as well so we can add another tag. Anyhow, enough of me talking, let me get stamping. Before I get to work on assembling, I've been coloring here and I'll talk about that in a minute. But before I get to assembling, I actually think that I want to take just a little bit of green. I'm gonna go with Mode Lawn Distress Ink around the edges of my tag just to kind of bring things together here. So I'm going to just go at the very, very edges ever so lightly, and I'm just stop starting off of the edge and just bringing it in here, and I'm just going to go around just really quick. Now, as for the stamping, I just stamp with black archival ink, and then I use clean color markers. You can use, oh my goodness, you can use whatever kind of markers, watercolors, Copics, colors. The stamping on this one, it's a use what you have situation, okay guys? Definitely use what you've got. Me, I went with a combination of distress and clean color. Um, I used some distress markers for the brown really, really lightly. And then as a finishing touch here, I've got some stickles that I put just on these little cupcakes here. I'm going to bring this way up so you can see. So on the little cupcake, I put some stickles on there because I thought that would be a lot of fun. Okay, and I've got two of those and these, and I cut these out by hand. If you had the matching dies, obviously that would be a much quicker way to do it. But these simple images, they're not too bad to hand cut, so it wasn't a problem or anything. And then I just had a circle of watercolor paper that I stamped, Christmas calories don't count on. And I guess I ought to finish that up. So let me, I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna make the end here red. And I think we'll also, Aside from the end of the spatula, I think I'll make some of the stripes green just for something a little different. And I don't worry about, you might notice if you see a few little white spots within there, I like to give it a second because this color does tend to spread. You know, it's really important to know your color mediums and know how they react to things. In this instance, I happen to know that they seem to kind of spread, so I wait. A second before I think oh well that's you know it's got white space or that's not perfect I give it a second because sometimes it fills in and for something like this this kind of a project I'm not going for masterpiece if there is an imperfection that's fine with me and you can see my backgrounds watercolor washed so totally okay all right we are on to assembly double-sided tape is good tape runner is good use what you've got I'm gonna put some start by putting some tape down here and I've got a strip of a lawn fawn paper. I like to have little strips and bits and pieces all ready to go this time of year. It seems to me like there's always projects. So having a few little things, having a little stash of stuff that's ready to rock, to me, it always, I'm always glad that I did. And I'm going to put a little bit of tape in the middle of this. And I don't know, I'll have to dig around and find some ribbons somewhere. 
but I'll put some ribbon through the top here and glue that down there. And then these guys, I'm going to have this one go just ever so slightly off to the side. And then this one's slightly under it. And then this little cupcake, I'm going to pop up on a little bit of it, a uh, foam adhesive, right? Like so. I like to position things. I also like to keep things simple, you know? I like to have a lot of fun, and I, I do like more complicated projects, but this time of year, things like this where I can have some stamping fun, and then we're almost ready here to add our dimensional embellishments, and not only did I get some creative playtime, but this is going to be a great tag for some goodies that I'm going to give this gift to someone. Well, to me, that's just all the better, because it means that I got some playtime, I got some things off my holiday to-do list and it all adds up to good fun. So I'm gonna let a little bit go off the edge there. And then I do, of course, have this little cupcake here. I'm just double checking it. The stickles are still a little bit, it's still a little bit wet, but that's okay. I'm just gonna get a little bit of foam adhesive. And if you have, I am out of the pre-made squares. I wish I had some. But if you have the tape or the squares or whatever it is that you've got, go ahead and grab that. I, me, I like to double it up and then let's see, I'm just going to customize here just, just the right size for our little cupcake cake, whatever that is. It looks yummy and I really wish that Christmas calories did not count because those sure do get me. Okay, so a little bit of dimensional adhesive there so that I can plop this down and the stickles are, it's still a little bit wet so I'm actually just going to kind of That'll work. I just need to make sure that it's down there. Now, I doubled up for a couple reasons. Number one, because this is going on a gift, I'm not worrying about it being super flat. And number two, it's time for us to get some dimensional accents going. And we've got the perfect spot right down here. And now these can all come on over. Oh, all the lovely things. And guys, because of the way I did this, what we're now going to be able to do are things like the little buttons will slide right underneath because I doubled up on that foam adhesive because I made it high enough that that's not a problem. And the greens, I'm going to go more reds and whites because I have some more kind of like lime green colors going on. So it's not that these greens wouldn't go. It's just that because I use those other types of greens, I'm just thinking that I'm just going to go just kind of a little different direction here. And I'm just going to place some various buttons. Ver buttons first because I say this, if you've watched any of my videos, you know, because I like to say this a lot, but it really is true. With these kind of dimensional accents, you want to start big and work small. It's much easier to fit in smaller items than it is to try to find a spot where you can get a bigger item to squeeze in. Now, I will use some of the green sequins and also some of these little green beads because I think they'll actually be a really good match. I'm just gonna fill, I'm gonna fill all that in as much as I want or as little as I want. What I love about this is, I mean, just take a look at it. It's super, super simple and it's gonna be a pretty clean looking tag, but it lets me use some fun little accents. And I'm actually thinking I might add one or two little green pearls. I think the green pearls will actually look really nice here. So cute. So, so cute. And isn't that fun? The only thing I have left is I'll need to find some trim that I like for that, but I'm going to wait until I have the package ready. But I will add, just to kind of bring everything all together, I'm going to add a few little droplets on here. And I'm going to grab a few sequins and maybe a few beads here. And just add a few fun little touches, and I'm going to go with the clearish sequins that I've got here. Now, if you've got tweezers or something like that, and you prefer to handle your sequins and such with tweezers, that's totally fine, of course. I'm a big fan of using what you've got forever and always. I mean, that just really is whatever I might have on hand is what I'm going for because that gets me using my stash as well as, I mean, that's the beauty of the holidays. I'm creating things for other people. I'm using my stash. I'm having fun. It's all adding up. Okay, I just need to put these final touches on here and then we will be ready to move on to creating our card. 
I've got a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of specialty stamping paper and I've got my stamp here and I'm just lining it up like so. Okay, we're gonna have ourselves a merry little, or, excuse me, have yours elf a merry little Christmas. This is one of my all time favorite Christmas stamp sets. This is an Ellen Hudson exclusive stamp set and I just love it. Okay, we're gonna go like so and then I'm gonna take my little elf here and ink him up. This, this is archival ink that I'm using and I'm looking at, and I realize I don't have it straight on the grid. I don't need to, it's fine. I'm gonna take him and put him over here. I'm just moving everything out of my way to make sure I've got it set just so. And you might be wondering, what in the world is she doing? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you guys. So for this card, we will mount it probably on the lawn fawn. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some dry adhesive. You could do double-sided tape. You could do tape runner like I am. Whatever you've got. And I'm going to run it. Do not stress yourself if it's exactly perfect. And I will explain why you're not going to stress yourself. Because we're going to add additional adhesive. So if it is not perfectly straight, you will have opportunities to sort that out to fix that up. And then we can take the embellishments here. And we're going to do our thing. Now, I can already see that I went crooked over here. But again, that's not a problem because what is that adhesive? That adhesive is a baseline. Now, what I am going to do is come in here with embellishments like so and fill it up. And I don't have to fill it up in any particular way. I can do it however I would like with whatever pieces I would like starting with buttons and like I remember how I said don't stress this if it's not straight you're not going to worry about it now you know why because as I fill this up if it's not straight I will straighten it by using for example a bigger button here where it's sloped down or on this end a smaller button now I do recommend picking one side or one spot to start with I also don't necessarily recommend very many sequins or beads yet. And I'll explain that in a second. First though, I've got to get this filled up. So to fill this up, start at one side. Like I picked this particular button. Now what I will do is fill all of this in or maybe not exactly fill it in, but get a lot of different elements going here. The half pearls are good to go as well. And I'm going to take and put these in. Now, this adhesive is not super strong and that's to our benefit. It's to our benefit right now because we don't necessarily want it super, super strong. We may want to adjust or change some things as we go along. So by having an adhesive that's a little on the weak side is actually most, most wonderful and to our benefit because that means that as I go along, if I go, oh gee, I wish I did this or that, I can pick this off if I really need to. It's a lot easier to fix than say, for example, if I had picked something really strong. Now, if I get some sequins that kind of flitter in there as I just did, we're going to let them stay. We're going to let them stay because while I am picking and choosing and I am most definitely Let's see, there's no adhesive right there, so I'm going to wait for that. Well, I'm definitely picking and choosing and selecting everything here. Um, it's not such a pick and choose type project. And what I mean by that is I am kind of going with the flow here. I'm just pouring a few more buttons here because I was hoping for a teeny tiny lighter green one. There we go. To go right up here. Okay. Once you get this going like I have it here, then your next step is going to be, I'm just seeing, let's see, do I have, oh, there's a teeny tiny red one. I might, I'm going to go ahead and put that teeny tiny red one there. And yes, it goes slightly over, but that will be fine. I will show you why in a second. Once I get most of it filled though, what I'm going to do at this time, and I like this for card making because if you've ever tried to make a card and put a lot of liquid adhesive, you may have found that what happened was you got into a bit of a pickle because all that liquid adhesive made your paper angry. It was too much. Um, it just, you know, your paper couldn't handle it. It wasn't a good choice. That happens 
to the best of us. So here's what this does. It does three different things. Number one, because we use the dry adhesive to get things going, that means that the dry adhesive is creating a barrier, wherever it is, it's creating a barrier for us so that now when I put my liquid adhesive down, the paper is not quite as saturated. So that's step one. Number two reason that this is good, it let us put all those buttons down without the liquid adhesive, which means it just kind of let us get a little bit of a different look. Now, if you have some go over onto the ink, it is archival ink, so don't worry about it, but I'm just getting it off of there. And number three, the dry adhesive is okay for buttons, but not the best. By adding this little bit of liquid adhesive here and there, what that does for us, now we've got that stability. So those buttons are really going to stick. And I can come in here now with the pearls as needed. Remember this spot right here, there was no adhesive. So I've got my pearls in there. Like I said before, if you have tweezers and want to use them, sometimes projects like this, it's good uh, to be able to place your sequins, be able to place your various smaller elements. Sometimes you have a little more control. You can take as much time with this as you would like. If you want to go wild with really getting particular about which sequins and where and all of those kind of wonderful details, please feel free to. If you're in a hurry, guess what? You could shake some little seed beads over this and be done in about a minute. Uh, so maybe even seconds. It's totally up to you, but you'll want to kind of fill this in. I like doing this part first because I like seeing what colors I've got and what's going on. Then what we'll do is we'll color in our little elf friend and add a few little sprinkles. Now that I've got everything glued on here, I'm just going to place this on a piece of pattern paper. Such a pretty pattern paper too. And I've got some double-sided tape on here. I'm just going to place this down and press it into place. Okay, so this will be need, need to be mounted onto a card, which is fine. I just have it mounted like so, just so I can get a better sense of how it's gonna look. Then what I'm gonna do is now I will go ahead and add color to our elf friend. Main reason why I left him plain first is if I had gotten liquid adhesive on our little elfy friend or had anything like that going on, well, things were going to blend and bleed, and that's not what we wanted. The adhesive now is nearly dry, and because I'm done adding bits and pieces, now I can color knowing that it's totally okay. I don't have to worry about that. And if you want to get fancy, if you want to get a lot of colors going, um, you know, whatever color mediums you wanted to use. If you want to get a lot of stuff going, I'm just darkening up his hat because I feel like I want his hat to be darker. You do whatever makes you happy. That is always and forever my philosophy on coloring and definitely with this. I need to find some good little hair color, maybe a little face color as well. But before I do that, I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit of glitter glue here. I think give the green a chance to dry and all the glue a chance to dry. I'm going to put a little bit of glitter glue like so. This is stickles, of course. Just like so. Give them a little dimension. Let that totally dry. And then I'll add a little face and hair color. I try not to go too many different colors at the same time. But I love it. I think it's so much fun. Now, final, final touch. If you wanted, this is totally up to you. If you wanted, I put a couple below here. I'm going to put a couple more. If you wanted to put a couple little sprinkles here and there, like so. First of all, don't worry about it if you get little bits of adhesive like that because this dries. This is a matte finish paper. This dries matte finish and clear. You don't have to stress that, which is always, always nice in my opinion to not have to worry if you make a mistake. So I'll put some little sequin clusters like so. And I'm going to get one more right here. And I think that ought to do it for me. Although I might want one more right here on the edge. Just a few little touches. I hope you have enjoyed, that's our third project already. I hope you have enjoyed creating here and adding some buttons and fun details to your projects. I know I've just been having a blast. And if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to contact me. Of course, all of these supplies and so much more available at ellenhudson.com. 
definitely one of my favorite online shops. So much great stuff and such fast shipping too. Love shopping there. All right, guys, I hope you've been inspired and I hope you have some very holiday, happy holiday crafting ahead. I'll see you next time.